guys, so this is a really quick video on how to divide using partial quotients. So if you guys remember in our multiplication chapter, if you're following along in McGraw-Hill, that was back in chapter 2, we were able to take apart a multiplication problem in order to break down the multiplication steps and use easier math problems, multiplication problems for us to find the answer. So you can do the same thing going backwards with division because remember multiplication is related to division. So I want you to think of this as a fact family. So what if the problem was 248 divided by 2? So what you're going to do is you're going to draw your rectangle just like you did before, but this time we're working backwards. So we're going to break up this 248. So I would have 240 and my 8, okay? And we are dividing that into two equal groups, as here is our divisor. So the 2 comes out here. So now what you're going to do is you're going to divide each of these by 2 and put the answer up here, and then we'll get our final answer. 200 divided by 2. Well, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and there are two zeros. 40 divided by 2. Well, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and there's one zero, so 20. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. Then go ahead and add your answers across, and that will be your final answer, 124. So 124 is our answer to this division problem. See how much easier that was? As opposed to going like this, 248 divided by 2, and then remember your steps. So we still would come out with 124 as our answer, but this is just an additional way. I think it's much easier. What it does is it breaks down your dividend into easier fact families to divide in order to find your answer to your problem. Okay. I want to show how this connects to multiplication by going backwards. So what if we had 124 times 2 as our problem? So remember we did that with multiplication. So we still had our rectangle, but we're going the other way, right? We had 2, but we had to break up 124 up here. So we had 120 and 4. And we need to now fill in these blank spots. 2 times 100 is 200. 2 times 20 is 40. And 2 times 4 is 8. And our answer would be 248. And that is correct. That is our fact family. So that is going backwards, showing that, again, the fact family works with division and multiplication. And if you remember using this way for multiplication, we were able to break up the numbers to find our answer. So how does that relate to this one? Basically, we did the same thing, but we are working backwards. We already knew this number, right? We know the dividend divided by the divisor. We were trying to find the answer by putting it on top. So it really helps to look at this to see the difference. And I'm going to do another example to help you out. Let's say we have, what if we had 585 divided by 5? You might think, well, that's a big number. I'm not sure. Well, let's go ahead and break it up. So remember, when we're doing quotients, when we're dividing, you break up the 585 inside the box. So we have 585. The 5 is the divisor, it still goes out here, and now we're trying to find our answer by dividing each of these separately. 500 divided by 5, so use those pattern tricks we learned. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and there are two zeros. 80 divided by 5. If you don't know your math facts, um, of fives, it would be really helpful to know those or have a multiplication chart out to help you because it, it is a fact family. Um, so what helps too is to go like this. So if you know that five, let's say five times 10 is 50, you can keep counting up by fives, right? So 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. I added six more fives. Okay, 
So 16 times 5, <clears throat> let's see if that's right. 5 times 6 is 30, and 5 times 1 is 5 plus 3 is 8. Yep, so 16 times 5 is 30, So, or I'm sorry, is 80. So I'm going to put my 16 right here. So what I just did was I did 80 divided by 5. I know it was 16, but you might not know that fact off the top of your head. So remember, our strategy is to start with a math fact that you know, and then keep going up. You can count on your fingers. Again, get a multiplication chart, whatever helps you. Okay, so our last one is 5 divided by 5, which is 1. And then we go ahead and we add across. So we have 100 plus 16 plus 1. Okay, well, 16 plus 1 is 17, and then we have 100. So we have 117, and that is your answer. So those are just a couple examples of how to do partial quotients. Remember that all you need to do is set up your rectangle, fill in the dividend by breaking up the hundreds, tens, and ones, and then dividing step by step, and then add your answers up top to get your final answer to your division problem. Make sure to check out the other one with multiplication using partial product, and I hope that helps you guys out.